Okay guys, here we go again. We're back at it. Here in our Intro to SolidWorks tutorial series. Let's just keep this going. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file for you. And I want to talk about this thing for a second. This is your new document dialog box. And you may not know it yet, but right now this document dialog box is set to novice mode. You can tell because there's giant shiny buttons here. And I'm not sure if I talked about this earlier. It's a little bit funny. Down here at the bottom is an advanced mode, and we'll click on that to take a look at it. In the advanced mode, you get the same set of information, except the buttons are smaller and they're not as shiny. And this kind of threw me when I first realized that it was just the same thing, just not as pretty. I thought, well, SolidWorks must think that if you're a novice user, you need big shiny buttons to understand what to do. And then I realized what it was actually for. As a novice user, you're just going to be wanting to create standard part assembly and drawing files as they are created in SolidWorks. No questions asked. But as an advanced user, you're going to be customizing the interface of SolidWorks and creating your own workspace. And as you create that customized, individualized workspace, with all the settings set up just the way you like them as an advanced user, you're going to want to save that as a template file. And each one of these things, part, assembly, and drawing, these are template files that are created by SolidWorks for users like you. But as an advanced user, you're going to create your very own. And then you're going to want to open that customized, individualized template file. And the only way to do that is here in the advanced tab. So, I want you guys to just get used to that. We're not actually going to be making our own template file until the next video, but I just want to kind of explain where we're going and what we're doing, and then later on, when you get to the next video, you'll see what we're up to. Okay, so just get used to it for now. I think you guys are all smart enough to understand that we're still going to be creating a part file, just the buttons aren't as big and shiny. Okay, so let's just hit OK and open up a new part document. As I said before, we are going to be creating a revolved boss base now. We're going to talk about revolves, okay? We'll just scroll over all of our planes here and we'll pick a plane that we want to draw on. In my case, I want to draw the, on the front plane. So I'm going to go here, do a right click, and I'm going to go to sketch. I'm going to start off by creating a straight line, super straight line, just like that. I'm going to hit escape to drop the tool. Now I'm going to grab my spline tool. I'm going to attach to the end of this straight line and I'm going to draw a crazy spline out into space. Attach it like that. It still stays. Even though I attach it to this line, it's still stuck to my cursor. I'm going to hit escape to let it go. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about tangency. Now, tangency means when two things line up together perfectly. As a 3D CAD artist or designer, you're going to want to fall in love with tangency. SolidWorks deals with tangency very well. And so the first thing that we're going to make tangent in this program are these two lines. We've got a straight line and we got this line that shoots off in another direction. And if we want to make those tangent, it means we want to make them flow together so that they are following the same exact pathway. They're following the same exact direction so that there's no break in the direction of this line. They just flow right into each other. Now, the way to do that is to select one of the lines and hold down the control button and then do a right click on the other line and bring up your options box. Once you do that, you see this line here, make tangent. So I'm just going to hit that button and it's going to create tangency between those two lines. It's even going to add a sketch relation right here to show me that, hey, these two bits are, are tangent, at least at this point right here they are. Okay, so there we go. So let's do that again on this side, okay? I'm going to select this line. Let me just click off of it. I'll select that line and then I'll hold down control and then I will do a right click on this line and we will make that one tangent also, okay? And so hopefully that explains a little bit about what tangency is. Now these two lines meet up at the exact same angle and they don't start to bend until they get way out here, okay? So voila. Now that we have these sketch relations holding this line and this line tangent to each other, we can dive right in here and we can twist this line around all we want change it to whatever shape we want. I'm just winging it here. And these sketch constraints will hold these two lines together tangent no matter what. Okay. Okay. So there we go. And let's move on. I'm going to exit out of this sketch now. Okay. 
looking over here in the design tree, we've got the sketch that we just drew. And so now I want to create a piece of construction geometry. I'm going to create a line way out here in space that we're going to use to revolve around. Okay. So we know that we're starting to do a revolved boss base, and this is going to be the profile of our revolved. And now we have to create the line that we want to revolve around. So let's do that. Let's go to the same exact plane that we used before, and we're going to go here and just create a sketch. You're going to see in the design tree, SolidWorks is great. They just throw that new sketch right into our tree. So we know we're working on a new sketch. I'm going to get my line tool, and I'm just going to go straight out from here and just draw a straight line. Voila. I'm going to hit escape to let go of that. And so now I have a straight line. I want to transform that line into a piece of construction geometry. Okay. I'm going to go here to the line. I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to go to this button here, construction geometry. Click on that. It transforms what used to be a solid straight line into a piece of construction geometry. Okay. So we're good there. Now we could have just as easily gone here to our line tool, done the drop down, picked center line and drawn out a center line and it would have come up as construction ge geometry from the start. Except we've already done that first of all and I want to show you guys how to create a piece of construction geometry from a line that you've already created. You might in the future start a sketch and decide later that you want a portion of it to be construction geometry and so you're going to have to know how to create construction work from line work that's already drawn. And so that's why I wanted to give you guys that example. I'm going to hold down shift and go middle mouse button, just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to drop into 3D space a little bit here and we're going to get started. I'm going to exit this sketch first of all. Okay. And now I'm going to grab my revolve boss base tool and it's going to ask me, Hey, what do you want to do with that tool? You want to um, pick a sketch at least that you want to revolve. I'll go out here to the, my design tree within my display area. And as I hover over all the different parts that are in this design tree, I see that when I get to sketch one, it highlights the sketch profile that I created. I'm going to click that. And now it brings up the property manager for the revolve. And I have to tell SolidWorks what line I'd like to revolve around. So I click here in axis of revolution, and then I'll click my line out here in space. And there you go. Just in the blink of an eye, SolidWorks revolves that line around this center line and we are good to go. Now, we have a couple of parameters we can play around with here if we want. We could go ahead and just, uh, you know, we could mess around with the degrees that this sketch rotates if we wanted to. And that's something that's, you know, an option if you feel like messing with it or if you want to make this sort of shape here, you could do that. Um, and we've got a couple other advanced features here which we'll go over later. But for now, let's just keep this at 360. Keep it simple, as they say. And we'll go ahead and hit the green checkbox to confirm that we've done everything we like. Okay. So now at any point that we want, we can dig back in to both of these things. We can go here to the sketch. We can uh, hover over the sketch to see which sketch is which. We go here to this one, and we realize this is our center line. And we go here to this one. And we see this is the profile. So if we wanted to make a change to the shape of this revolve, we could just dig right in there, do a right click. You know, we could pull, let's say we just pull this guy way out like that, just to do something extreme. Confirm we like that, exit the sketch, and then voila. Now we've got a big old thing sticking out of our revolve. Fine. That looks lovely. Nice little flying saucer. And we could just as easily get back in there and undo that by just pushing this guy right back in there like that. We could even go in like this. Take a look. Maybe stretch these guys out. Oh my gosh. We are taking chances, folks. Exit the sketch, and there it is like that. Okay. Revolve is a really powerful tool if you know how to use it. And being able to create or think about what is the profile of my revolve, that is the key to creating good revolves. If you want, we can go up here to the heads up display. We can go here to our section view. This is the first time we've used section view before. I'm going to flip the direction so I can see what I'm talking about. This cuts our model right in half so we can see the profile that we drew. And it, you can grab this um, arrow here in the center and see any part of the section view that you want just by dragging. Super simple. The section view uh, tool is something that you turn on and off. So up here in this corner here, you can confirm that you like it and it will leave it cut in half, but you'll see that the button is turned on. Now you can just as easily turn it off and it will go away. Okay. Alternatively, you could have hit 
you can hit that red X right here and it'll go away also. So there we go. Now we have learned how to create a revolved boss base. The one thing to remember about it is that you need to have something to revolve around. Now, in our next tutorial, we're going to be learning more about this sort of stuff. This is construction geometry as we so defined it as, and that concept falls within the category of reference geometry here in SolidWorks. Okay? And so, I understand that we'll probably be wanting to do a lot of revolves in our career with SolidWorks. So I want to what I want to go over in our next tutorial is how to create a stock of construction geometry that we can refer to at any point with whatever model we're making. And so stay tuned. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and do that. So why don't you just set your minds to making some cool revolves right now? Play along with that. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Let me shut this down here and stop. Bye-bye.